Yo ho ho! Welcome back to another video. I hope you're keeping well. So today I'm starting a new weekend reading vlog, which I'm really looking forward to because I've got some very lofty reading goals, at least page count wise. Um, this weekend I have just been on a really good streak with reading recently and I am still getting through my summer TBR and I just want to kind of keep that momentum going, you know what I mean? So before I get into the books, I just want to talk to you firstly about today's video sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. I've been wearing glasses for about five years now so I was incredibly excited when GlassesUSA.com reached out to me and offered me this sponsorship because for the first time ever it meant that I could think of my glasses as not just a tool to help me see better but also to be able to integrate them into being a genuine fashion accessory which is something I've never had the opportunity to do so before. By cutting out the middleman GlassesUSA.com offers over 10,000 prescription glasses and sunglasses including in-house brands such as Muse and Amelia E and designer brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, Gucci and many many more at up to 70% off retail prices. GlassesUSA.com offer a risk-free shopping experience including free shipping and returns, 100% money back guarantee within 14 days. GlassesUSA.com also offer 25% off all contact lens brands such as Vistaplast, Acute, Biofinity and many more. So it makes it the perfect place to stock up on contact lenses so you can easily have them on hand for whenever you need them next. GlassesUSA.com also offer blue light blocking glasses where you can purchase glasses specifically against the glare from your phone or while being on your computer at home. And this is something that I put in all of my prescription lenses because I spend a ridiculous amount of time on the computer or looking at my phone. And I can safely say that I have noticed a difference with with uh, lesser eye fatigue over time being sat at the computer for hours and hours at a time. GlassesUSA.com even has a virtual try-on tool on their website which really aids in helping you find the perfect pair of glasses to suit your face. I use the virtual try-on tool to help me select my frames and I swear I must have virtually tried on almost every single frame that GlassesUSA.com have to offer on their website because I am so indecisive when it comes to these things. But what I really loved about the experience is that I could just take my time. Like there was no rush, I didn't feel like there was a time limit that I had to select my frames by and because of that reason I feel really happy and confident with the pairs that I've selected. First pair that I want to show you are the ones that I'm actually currently wearing which are the Atoto Nord in a clear brown and gunmetal frame. I wanted to go with something that's a little different from what I'm used to and go outside my comfort zone a little bit and pick something that I can utilize like I said at the start as a fashion experience. Accessory. I find that black frames are really harsh on my skin tone so I went with these clear brown frames and I feel like I made a really good choice with that because I think they really suit me. I'm so happy with them and I'm happy that I'm able to utilize them as a little fashion accessory like I said at the start of the video but also these are going to be my new day-to-day -day glasses so the glasses that I wear when I'm going out and about and they're so comfortable too. Next I picked out these glasses. They are by the brand Muse in the style Francesca and the colors are brown tortoise and gold. I tend to lean a bit more towards cat eyes because I have a little face and I feel like the uplift really complements me and I'm just very very happy with these. These are going to be my new computer glasses. And then finally this is the last pair of glasses that I selected. They are a beautiful wire rimmed frame in rose gold by the brand Amelia E in the style Manola. I've never had a pair of wire frame glasses before because I never thought they'd really suit me but when I saw these and virtually tried them on I thought this is the pair for me and I feel like this is definitely my most bookwormy sort of look so far which I'm very excited about. So I have the links to all the glasses that I've shown you in the description box down below so feel free to check them out if you're interested in getting new glasses or if you want to virtually try them on to see if they suit you. So if you're looking to get a new pair of glasses at a much more affordable price point or simply want to stock up on contact lenses head over to glassesusa.com by using the link in my description box below this video. And I just want to say thank you so much to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video and now let me get into talking about what I'm going to be reading this weekend. So the first book that I'm going to be reading for this vlog and hopefully I'll be able to finish it today, I know it's quite a lofty goal but I think I have the time enough to do it, is Bunny by Mona Awad. So when I hauled this recently I said I didn't know much about the premise of this novel 
and I didn't really know anything about the plot and I pretty much still don't. I don't really want to be looking it up because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything on myself. All I know is that it's a dark academia story. It centres a young girl who's attending college who gets in with a sorority of girls who all refer to each other as Bunny and I'm assuming that these bunnies are up to no good and they get involved in some pretty twisted, messed up stuff um, because I've heard that it's really disturbing and that it's really kind of like a wild read and pretty much all I'm expecting from this today is that I just want to be entertained. That is my only expectation of this book. I just want it to ent entertain me, nothing else really. So there's that. And then the next one, which you're probably going to be like, why do you think you can get through so much of this book in two days? But listen, I am trying to keep up a momentum here. So hopefully I can do it. But I am aiming to read 500 pages of Stephen King's It. Um, this is one that I feel like I'm not going to be able to read or knuckle down with unless I'm actually including it in a reading vlog. So that is specifically why I'm going to be reading this for this vlog, because there's no way that I'd read it this year if I wasn't doing it like this. It's basically to hold myself accountable. I tend to kind of like struggle getting into some of Stephen King's works. I find him to be quite hit or miss sometimes. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to immerse myself in the story pretty quickly in order to kind of keep myself going with reading that amount of pages this weekend. Um, I have watched um, the most recent film adaptations of the story so I feel like that's probably going to interfere a little bit with my reading experience of this. However I might be able to utilize that to my benefit in the sense of like not having to work too hard to remember each and every character because I have a pretty clear idea of the characters in my head already. I just kind of just want to have this read. Um, I feel like this is a book that a lot of people have expected me to have already read and I haven't. Um, I actually don't even know what number Stephen King book this is going to be for me. I feel like it's going to be probably like, I want to say seven, seven or eight. <laughs> I think I'm like seven or eight Stephen King novels in so far uh, with his uh, um, amount of work that he's published. I think he's at like 50 is it like 56 or 59 or something published works now? But I don't know. 500 pages of Stephen King's It probably isn't the most doable thing over a Saturday and Sunday, um, especially when I am going to be doing a lot of stuff this weekend. I'm actually going on a trip tomorrow down to Rosslair for like a day trip. I'm going to be staying the night down there and um, I'm hoping to get a lot of reading done on the plane. On, on the plane, I can't, <laughs> could you imagine? Uh, on the train in the morning time. Um, but after that, I feel like it's going to be quite patchy. So listen, we, we're going into this with good vibes and positivity because that's what I need at the moment. So I am going to check in with you once I have actually started reading Bunny and I'll be giving you my thoughts on that and hopefully I'll be entertained. All right, Huns, time for a check-in. I'm 90 pages into reading Bunny so far. I should be a lot further in because I was a bit bold earlier and after I filmed the intro clip, I had my breakfast and I decided, I've actually recently started watching The Walking Dead and I decided I'll watch an episode of Walking Dead while I have my breakfast, no harm, no foul. And then that turned into three episodes. So I'm a little bit behind on time. I could be a lot further into this, but I've only been reading for about 40 minutes. And like I said, I'm 90 pages into it. So it is flying by and I am confident confident that I can get this finished today. So um, yeah, my thoughts so far. Right, so our main character is Samantha. She's a 25 year old college student at a very sort of, it seems to be like a prestigious sort of writing school. Um, like if you want to be a writer, this is the place you go. And um, she seems to be a bit of a loner, a bit of an outsider. She seemingly only has one close friend called Ava and she's very much influenced by Ava's um, like thoughts and stuff. Like not necessarily that she wants to impress her and have the same thoughts because she definitely um, has, you know, certain likes and dislikes that are her own. But um, when it comes to the group of girls the bunnies. Um, a, a lot of Samantha's 
um, thoughts seemingly are influenced and filtered through Ava's perspective. Um, so yeah, like I don't really think much of Samantha so far. She seems to be... She's not the most interesting character that I've come across. Maybe that's going to change, you know? She doesn't seem to be like super out there or super confident or anything like that. Um, so it's not necessarily fun to read from her perspective. However, like she does have a lot of these like inner monologues and I will say that I'm not a huge fan of the writing style so far because these inner monologues are just very wordy and you're it's just kind of like word vomit and you're just presented with a lot of information right off the bat which I don't want to say is overwhelming because that seems to be a bit too serious of a word to put on it but like I get it like I get what the author's trying to do it's like Samantha is a smart girl yes um does she have to keep dissecting everything and you know kind of overthinking and all this kind of thing you know no not necessarily but yeah I'm not really enjoying that 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 prospect so far but um when it comes to the bunnies not much has happened with them yet the only sort of vibe that I'm getting is like a Stepford Wives sort of vibe from them um I don't even uh, like Samantha has like nicknamed them herself and so like when it comes to their actual names I'm not really sure who's who yet um but yeah I, I have a kind of a feeling like it's gonna go like a mean girls sort of route where um she's indoctrinated into the group and then like forgets all about her friends and you know that kind of drama ensues I'm hoping that it's not that though because I feel like you know that's very much been done before and all that type of thing um, but yeah, I suppose I've got a, a lot of thoughts coming to me, like, right away, but, like, nothing interesting, <laughs> no, that's so harsh, nothing interesting has happened yet, but nothing, like, disturbing or weird has happened yet. I need to talk to you about this book. So, when people say it's weird or it's disturbing, I now understand what they're actually referencing. And yes, I agree, it is quite bizarre. Um, things have escalated quite severely. And, you know, obviously the story has gotten a lot more interesting because of this, but there is one particular scene uh, initially that I was so confused by because initially I thought it was a dream sequence because it was just, it just didn't really make any sense to me. And then other characters started referencing it. So I was like, okay, maybe it was like some sort of drug induced thing. But no, apparently it's just a thing that these girls in the sorority do and it really reminds me of a specific episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I'm not going to say which one but if you know you know. Um, so I thought that was kind of amusing but yeah like the way the girls even talk I find it very irritating. Uh, again like I'm still having a little bit of issues with the writing style and I understand the choices that were made, but it's just something that I purposely find a little bit irritating. Basically, when um, the bunnies are talking to Samantha and say, uh, they say something like, one of them will say, oh, you're so interesting. And then another one will interject and just say, so interesting. They all kind of echo each other. And it is somewhat explained because it's not even like a hive mind mentality that's happening with these girls. It's more like thinking in unison, which is incredibly disturbing. Um, and it kind of kicks up, it kind of like ramps up the whole uh, kind of culty vibes that are going on in this book. Um, so I really like that element to it. Um, again, Samantha is, it's kind of like there, there's, it's so hard to talk about it without like specifically being like and then when this happened wasn't that crazy but yeah like it is weird for sure but if that specific thing that I'm talking about is the most disturbing part of this book then I think that's quite tame in my mind um like I've read a lot of really genuinely disturbing weird creepy books over the years so this is like like I said, it reminds me of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. If you're bringing me back in a sort of nostalgic way, um, I don't think you're really, like, hitting that um, bar with me, you know? But, um, yeah, like, 
certainly entertaining, which is what I was hoping for. I'm finished. So it's just coming up to half seven now and I'm finished Bunny. I've been reading it on and off all day. Like I would, you know, read 60 pages, then take a break for a while and then I'd get back to it and read 40 pages, then take a break. And I find that that really kind of worked for me rather than sitting down and trying to binge read it all in one session. Um, and while I was taking my breaks, I was still excited to go back to it. So that was good. Um, what I loved about this book, first and foremost, the setting. I think I'm definitely going to be reading more Dark Academia in the future. Reading about being in college has just made me yearn to be back in college. Like, I've something that I've really struggled with over the last year after graduating is, like, just wanting to feel secure in an academic environment. So reading this kind of gave me those good feelings again. And, um, yeah, I really liked the character of Ava and I really liked, oh god, what, one of the bunnies, um, was it Creepy Doll? I think it was Creepy Doll. <laughs> um, I really liked those characters and their general kind of vibe and aesthetic and stuff. Like, those were girls that I feel like I could have been friends with if I was going to Warren. Um, but yeah, like, it did definitely get strange. Um, but I, like, the ending didn't go exactly where I wanted it to go. I wanted the ending to be brutal. I think that there was like 12 alternative endings that could have been better than the one that we were given. You know, it is what it is. It was grand. Like, I feel like this was a solid three star read for me. I definitely would be interested in picking up another book by this author again in the future. Um, but, like, I did have my issues with it. Like I said, wasn't a huge fan of the writing style. Like, I know I was complaining about how the bunnies talked um, and how they echoed each other and stuff and just kind of regurgitated what each other said. But um, I found that, you know, we have to... I had to, like, remind myself, like, these are women in their 20s, yet they're talking to Samantha as if they are in their teens still. I felt like they were very juvenile, and at times when they were trying to be kind of, like, um, acting above Samantha and being a bit pretentious and stuff, it, it did feel like... Uh, a, a kind of a child putting on an act and stuff, uh, particularly with the Duchess's character. Um, but yeah, like, you know, um, there's always good and bad in books that you read, and I went into this not really knowing anything about it. I purely picked it up because I kept seeing it on my Instagram feed over and over and over again, and I thought, hey, maybe, you know, this is something a bit different to what I usually read, you know, it's a, it's a nice break from all the classics and general kind of horror that I read. Um, so yeah, definitely worth picking up if you're interested in Dark Academia. Um, it's no secret history, but um, yeah, like the dynamics between the girls um, was very interesting to read about. The ending did kind of break my heart a bit, but I'm all right. We're good. <laughs> so I am gonna... I think I'm gonna watch some episodes of Walking Dead. I was thinking about starting it, but like, I just read, what, 370 pages in Bunny. The thought of reading something else now is kind of like, ugh. And also like, I wanna kind of marinate in my thoughts about Bunny, because I don't feel like I've accurately really talked you through my, like I've talked you through my experience, you know, bit by bit, but um, my overall thoughts, will probably come later on in the video or even at the end of the month when I'm doing my summer reading wrap up. Um, but yeah, I just kind of want to fester on my thoughts and I don't think introducing a new book with a new bunch of characters into the mix is going to be very beneficial to me. So I'm going to watch a few episodes of Walking Dead and then I'm going to settle down early because I have to be on the train tomorrow morning at 25 to 9 so I'm absolutely dreading it. I do not like you know you make plans and you're like yeah woo you can't wait and then like the plans actually come up and you're like oh my god. <laughs> uh, but anyway I'll have a great day and it'll be a great weekend so I'll stop moaning. Anyway I'll talk to you in the morning.
So I made it down to Ross Lair, okay, I'm just settling into the room now and kind of like spreading myself out and unpacking and basically kind of organizing myself. The train journey down was really nice. I feel like I got my year's worth of dopamine just from seeing all the cows and sheep and horses in the fields on the way down. Um, I read for all of the journey, which I wasn't expecting this morning when I was leaving. I was thinking maybe I'll get to like 50 pages into it and then I'll just like listen to some music or something like that, but that never happened. But I did get much further than 50 pages. I ended up getting in uh, 120 pages. So I'm on the chapter called The Six Phone Calls and so far I'm really enjoying it. Now I will say that I am envisioning the characters from the most recent film adaptation of it which is kind of annoying but I kind of am feeling like mentally the characters are already like fleshed out and like because of that reason because I've seen that so I'm not I'm not feeling like I have to pay as hard as attention that I usually would with Stephen King's work because I tend to read his writing style a lot slower than I would just the average book for some reason. I don't know, th there's always like a lot of groundwork that I feel that I have to cover um, getting into his larger works. Um, but so far I'm enjoying it. I feel like I said it's pretty fast paced. Um, I'm I'm excited for what I'm going to learn. It's already been pretty brutal so far, right off the bat, um, which I wasn't really expecting. Um, I thought like maybe it would the setup would be a little bit different, but so far it's kind of on par with um, the movie adaptations and stuff. So yeah, I'm sorry if I keep referencing the movie adaptations. I'm going to try to like keep that at a minimal. Um, for the rest of the vlog, but yeah, um, but yeah, I'm, I, I was aiming to read 500 pages of it this weekend, I'm already 120 pages in, so I feel like I'm already ahead of myself, but I can't really, you know, take that for granted, I'm going to be doing more reading this evening, we're going to get ready and go out shortly, we're going to go out on a walk and um, take Shadow with us, so I don't know if we're going to go to the beach or if we're going to find a trail somewhere or a park or something like that, but usually around these kind of places of the country, like, there's more than enough places to, like, have a trot around, so that's what we're going to do. I'm not sure what we're going to do this evening, but I plan to do a good bit of reading at some point later in the day, so I'll check in with you then. Good evening, so we're back from our adventure out. Rob suggested that we go to Johnstown Castle because he'd been there previously with his family and he thought it'd be something that I might enjoy and he was not wrong. I had so much fun and we were there for a really good long time. Um, it was a little bit annoying because we had to pay nine euro in each, but um, I think we got our money's worth out of it with all the walking around the estate that we did and um, just seeing the peacocks roam around was incredible. Um, it's been a really long time since I've seen like a peacock in the flesh and what was like extra special about it is that they had a cordoned off area um, that visitors could look through glass and see um, the mothers and their babies and I've never seen a baby peacock before so seeing like 12 of them at one time was just amazing. Um, but yeah it was very majestic and very fairy tale like and um, I just loved it. I was absolutely in my element. So I've got that need for adventure and a good long walk out of me for today. Um, and between prior to going out and now I managed to read another 60 pages of Stephen King's It. I'm on part two, chapter four. And I, I know it's a bit early to say, but I feel like um, this may possibly be my first five-star Stephen King read. Um, 
just because like I know I'm getting through it quite quickly purely because of this vlog because I'm kind of forcing myself to read I, I don't mean force like in a bad way but I'm just more motivated to read because I'm holding myself accountable like I said um through this vlog but I'm I'm just I'm entertained by it and I'm looking forward to what's happening next and I'm I'm looking forward to just like the little bits that I, I I don't know about, like the the character development and the relationships that they have with one another, um, and for example, like the the PTSD like induced um, why can't I think of it? I want to say insomnia. It's not insomnia. Um, amnesia that certain characters have experienced after leaving. Dairy, um, and now they've you know it's all flooding back to them all their their childhood trauma and stuff. I think that's really interesting, like the just the kind of general mental health side. But I know it's kind of like there's also I'm assuming it's kind of like a, a magical element in there too. Um, but I'm just I don't know. There's something about it that has me really excited, and I wasn't expecting that because I was like, oh, I'm so familiar with the story. Um, it's probably gonna be you know I was thinking like my worst case thought was that I was gonna have a similar experience to when I read The Shining where I was just expecting bits from the movie to happen in the book and then ultimately they didn't happen um so so far not had that experience so far very excited about what's to come um do I think I'll be able to do more reading today? Possibly. Um, like I did kind of want to get up to page 200-ish just so that tomorrow I wouldn't have to read as much but um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah I'm, I'm just I'm feeling really good about this one and so far I feel like I have properly connected with these characters and that's something that's kind of rare for me in the sense of like it usually takes me a lot longer um to feel you know connected and concerned about characters and stuff so yeah um I have kind of been longing to read a bit of Stephen King and I just feel like this time around it's really his writing style is just really taking me in so yeah that is my thoughts so far <laughs> or those are my thoughts so far I should say um, yeah, don't know what's happening this evening, probably get a bit of food and stuff, don't know if we're going to be going out again, or what's the story, um, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> I just had a really good day, and so, like, if that's all we end up getting up to today, I'm happy enough with that. So I'm calling it a quits with reading tonight. I made it to a page 180, so it means I've got a lot of reading to do tomorrow. But we're just going to watch some What We Do in the Shadows now. I'm all cosy and tucked up on the sofa, and himself is down there being a little, little key. So before we leave, I thought I'd give you a quick room tour. So um, this is the room. It also has an ensuite, which was quite nice, you know, handy. Um, probably got the worst night's sleep of my life in this bed. Very rickety. And uh, yeah, there's there's me. Hello. And then this is the sitting room that we were relaxing in last night. It's cute. It's cozy. I would show you the kitchen too, but I don't want to be bum rushed by the dog. Hey Hans, I'm home, obviously. Uh, we had to be out of the house earlier at 11, which I feel is like a really early checkout time, but sure, there's nothing we can do about it. Anyway, um, we made it back to Dublin in pretty good time. Like we were home just after one-ish. So Rob dropped the pupper home and then he dropped me home. So that was grand. Um, and yeah, really good journey home too. I, I didn't read in the car I was I tried to I read I read like two pages and then I was like I am just testing I'm tempting fate because like I get really motion sickness and stuff and I was like I'm not about that I'm really don't want to mess up Rob's car or anything so um since I've been home I've been reading pretty consistently I'm now on page 365 of it um I started at 180 and um, I, I feel like that's pretty good progress so far, but I am aware that I'm reading a good bit slower than I was, say, yesterday morning when I was on the train, um, just because I'm so tired, because I had such a cruddy night's sleep. Uh, basically, every time I rolled over in bed, it would just squeak and stuff, and then when I woke up this morning, I was like, 
oh, <laughs> I need a shower. <laughs> you know what's been happening in this bed. Um, but anyway, I am absolutely loving the friendship that are the friendships that are forming in this. Um, the childhood chapters so far have been my favourite, which is a big surprise because I usually don't really like reading about kids or, you know, like, I, I just haven't... I don't like things from kids' perspectives. I don't know. I, I think I just, I'm so far past that point that I, I just have a hard time getting back into that, like, headspace. But with this, you know, it's obviously Stephen King um, wrote The Body, which the film Stand By Me is based on, and it's giving me that exact same sort of um, friendship dynamic, and um, it's just making me somewhat nostalgic. And I'd say so far my favourite character is Ben, because he's just so lovely and so sweet. Um, but, will say, like, there are um, some incredibly brutal scenes of abuse in this, not just like um, child abuse, but also just the other kids, like the other bullies in the town and stuff. It's really quite extreme, like reading it in this day and age, and um, it, it is like something that you're like, oh wow, and I know that I haven't even gotten to the worst part with that sort of thing yet, so I'm like, wow, uh, I'm already starting to feel a bit like feel a bit funny about reading it, but anyway. Um, also, there has been a good few appearances from It himself, and I will say with the horror so far, I, I've been really, really enjoying it. There has been some really nice, eerie moments in this, and what I love about it is that like every child's experience is so different, but especially when they were having the discussion and realising that they were all being They'd, they'd all seen this being or this creature and they, you know, their experiences were quite different though, like of what it took shape uh, to them. Um, I, I think that's just such a cool aspect. Like I love the whole kind of shapeshifter thing. I find that really creepy. Like I don't have a clown thing. I don't, I'm not as scared of clowns. So I, I was thinking going into this, I was like, I wonder how, um, scary I'm gonna find this like is this gonna be effective on me but I will say like yeah it is like there are moments where you're just like it, it just it's so creepy you know and the fact that it's happening so early on is making me really happy because I was also worried that it was gonna be in like the latter half of the book um, there's also been a good amount of um, foundation work being laid with the history of Derry and particularly the missing children or the children that have been found dead and uh, like what's surprising is that like it went through the history of like the most recent years of missing children cases and I was thinking I was like if I was a parent I would just move from this town because like it is it it, it goes into it um more than any of the film adaptations did like this is where I'm learning new things and I'm just like this is shocking like how is this like how are people like oh yeah you know it just you know this is what happens here um but yeah, like, I am still really, really enjoying this. Um, I just wish I, I was able to um, take it in a bit more. Like, I feel like I'm putting in a lot of effort, like I said, into my reading today because I'm so tired. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a good bit more reading done this evening. I'm going to take a little break now. I'm just going to have a cup of tea and try to, like, you know, caffeinate and perk myself up to get the rest of my pages in today but yeah we'll see fingers crossed hey hans good evening um i am now at page 430 of it and i think i've hit the threshold of reading i'm at that point where i feel like if i keep reading i'm just not going to be able to take in what i'm reading and that basically defeats the purpose you know so i am going to call it a night with it I tried my best to get to 500, but I feel like 430, you know, it's 70 pages off. It's not that bad. And it means that this weekend I've read 800 pages, which is good. 
that is very good for someone like me um, whose reading has been incredibly sporadic over the last year and a half so I'm taking this weekend as a win. I know that if I'd read the 250 pages yesterday I absolutely, you know, and if I'd stayed home for example it absolutely would have been a doable task because I've read 250 pages today since being home um, but yeah I'm just absolutely exhausted. I wanted to have a nap today but I didn't. I pushed through and did more reading. So I still stand by the fact that I think this is going to be my first five star Stephen King novel. I haven't read anything that I feel takes away from that rating so far. Um, basically I love the pacing. The pacing is absolutely wonderful. Like I said earlier in my last clip that um, it, the dribs and drabs of horror that have been already added into the story are just excellent. They're so eerie. Um, there was like one particular experience, I think it was Ben's, when he saw um, the clown for the second time and he was talking about how evil the voice sounded um, but he was still somewhat lured in by him and still wanted a balloon from him and stuff despite the fact that you know very much so the stranger danger was going off in his mind. Um, the writing itself is fantastic like it's so fluid and the dialogue I feel like is incredibly accurate to how kids would talk when there's no adults around and um, there hasn't been many parts of it yet where they have been older. There's just been a couple of segments but so far it's mostly the, the childhood years and like I said I'm really just enjoying reading from that perspective and reading that era um, which is a relief. It's a, it's a relief knowing that I I don't really gel well when reading about kids and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what I feel about when I get to the end of this. Um, you'll be hearing my full thoughts on it in my summer reading wrap-up which will be coming at the end of the month so keep your eyes peeled for that. Again a huge thank you to this video sponsor GlassesUSA.com and like I said before if you need any sort of new eyewear such as prescription glasses, sunglasses, contact lenses head on over to their site using the link in my description box below and yeah um, great great weekend reading. <laughs> really happy and I'm also really looking forward to next month's reading vlog because I'm going to be reading a book next month that many of you have been telling me to read for years now so I'm finally going to do it uh, and you know it's going to be a super super depressing experience so woo! <laughs> um, but yeah thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of the books that I have read in this vlog feel free to let me know your thoughts and as always I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye!